I love your hair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wendy wanted to make sure I complimented her on record recording. Wanted it recorded. That's right. It looks amazing. Right. It is so cute. Well, I found, you know how I've been trying to get the color out of the bottom? No. You know the, you know how your, uh, your hair highlights, they get kind of yellow. Oh. And so my, you've never noticed that my hair had the yellow color still left at the ends? No. So I went in and the guy said, you know, this is the old color right here, right? And so if we took it off, and so four inches, he took off. Wow. It looks so and, cute. And I, said, I know. I really like it. Yeah, it looks it's, awesome. So it's about, you know, I got my hair cut once, uh, probably five years into my career, real short, like like chin length. Oh, and I like, a- like a boy. <laughs> it wasn't good. So I was having nightmares for that. Oh, so, bobs like, are great. That's what's People love bobs. But you I know got, this you've is got a new... lob, a long bob. Oh, I like that. I've got a lob. You do. I like you have it. a lob. <laughs> well, and I go to this guy who who is my friend Sean's. He's not taking any more people. And I get in and he, you know, he's a new guy. I don't know him. And I just said, screw it. I'm going to let him do it. Wow. So we did it. So it's it good. good for you. I love I it. I love it. It looks yeah. amazing. And yeah. he, you obviously Thank did you. that today. It's like fresh. Looks like you yeah, got it was like out. yesterday. Oh, okay. Yeah, it looks great. So on the way on the way to his his place, which I didn't know where it was, the transmission went out on our only vehicle. Oh no, the Nissan Rogue. <laughs> yes. So you'd push the gas, and it the RPMs would go down and do nothing. Uh oh. And so it would huck a juck like this. Oh my god. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. And so scared the crap out of me. I get to the hair appointment because I'm not going to miss that. It's the only appointment he had for three weeks. <laughs> and so I make I go 30 miles an hour until I get there. Oh Luckily, my God. it's pretty close. <laughs> and then I get home and I tell Chris, I think this thing is really broken. <laughs> it feels like the fuel or something. So he drives it and he goes, yep, it's really broken. <laughs> and so I start doing my research and it's a lemon. Oh. It's from... It's one of the years that has an extended warranty that all of these CVT transmissions were crap in the Nissan Rogues, oh, in the God. Nissans. And so now I'm push. I have to get it. So I, I cannot believe I'm saying this on here, but I sign up for AAA. So in case it leaves me, I get it towed. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and sure enough, the next day I had to get towed. Oh. Oh my god i can't believe you they, drove it even drove it another day oh we didn't drive it another day it was i had to take it to get the diagnostic codes from the local place to prove it was the transmission look at the little puppy i had to hold him because he's having a tough day well it's we a, have to find out why well it's the first day of snow here in colorful colorado and Charlie's not really a winter weather person, so he's just having a hard time adjusting. So Charlie needs to be my puppy because we're in the warm weather. Yes, yes, and he literally Aww. asks to be held when he's cold. So I just, I'll just, oh my, I'll just hold him. I didn't know little. Charlie was so needy. Oh, he's so needy. He's so if Charlie, needy. if they say dogs take after one of the two puppy mama daddies, <laughs> who is the most needy of you and Parker? Probably me. Uh, <laughs> I would say so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was trying to ask it with a straight face. Like, we already know the answer to this. Yes, so. but I answered with a straight face. Sometimes Parker's did. needy. Oh. I literally am the only reason he is fed all the time. That's pretty freaking needy. Oh, that is. And I sent him a TikTok today of this little girl. She was with her dad and her dad goes, are you hungry? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, well, what do you want to eat? And she goes, I don't know. And then she, he's like, do you want me to just pick for you? And she's like, yeah. And he's like, can you at least tell me the genre? And she's like, no. And I sent it to Parker. I said, this is you. 
You can't even you can't even tell me what you're in the mood for. I have to literally pick everything for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, cuz Chris loves everything I come up with. Oh. The only thing he doesn't love tuna. And oh. he told me no. He said he's he he said it's so nice though. He said I'm you make tuna fabulous, but I'm just not a big tuna fan. <laughs> I said, okay, no more tuna. That is crazy. No I tuna. love tuna. A good I like love tuna. A good good like tuna fish salad on a toast or a yes. tuna fish sandwich, a tuna melt. Yes, love yes. it. Yes. What's your secret? Because mine is sweet pickles with Ooh. the pickle juice. Oh, yum! I put everything but the bagel seasoning in my tuna salad. Oh, I love that stuff. We're almost out, and I'm freaking out because there's no Trader Joe's in Texas. You can get or it at Costco. Near us. You... We don't have a Costco. Oh, well, maybe get it no. on Amazon or something. Oh, I like that. But yeah, I, like I put that. in my tuna salad a little mayo, a little mustard, That's a little perfect. lemon juice, and then you got to do Ooh. the everything but the bagel. Oh, if there's see, one now, thing I, I want everybody to take away from this episode, it's that they should put everything but the bagel seasoning in their tuna salad. Look at, okay, look at Charlie. people. I <laughs> know. Charlie's like, you're a little adamant about that. Yeah, Charlie's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we luckily have bikes we borrowed from our friend sean that lives here okay and i got a trailer on um like craigslist okay or facebook and zoe rides in the trailer oh my gosh to the beach oh my god she's just and living then, the life oh my god you should have seen her today she was running after the birds yeah and she was going into the water after them and I've never seen a dog so happy. And people would stop me and say, that dog is living its best life. <laughs> I said, I know. I know. Oh, my God. That's awesome. It's so great. Uh, it's living by the beach is amazing. And have, having water outside, you know, the intercoastal has been really great. Yeah. It, so nice. But we have, is this your favorite we, place on the tour to Wendy and Chris? No, Bonita Springs was. Bonita Springs. All right. Well, I'm kind of torn between the two. This area is not as great. It's a rental kind of area. So it's a little, shall I say, trashy. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's not good. Okay. <laughs> it's just it's just a little, you know, everything looks real run down. And, but um, there's, you know, people say don't leave packages out and that kind of stuff. Yeah, right. So, um so, but we've had, since we've gotten here two weeks, um, the people to the left of us are getting all the popcorn and all the texture scraped off every surface. Oh. So we have that all day. And then four days ago, the people above us started working on renoing and putting in flooring. Oh, God. So, two, so you have it two, from both. <laughs> and two nights ago, from 2 to 3.30, we thought the guy was moving furniture. He was working on the floor. At 2 a.m.? What and an so idiot. I, ha I had to confront him. Well, yeah, obviously. It was so hard, though, because... That's what happens when you don't had... have a woman around. Because a woman would oh. be like, are you sure yeah. you should be doing this at 2 a.m.? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he went, oh, you can hear it? And I oh, thought, oh, my, my God. Oh, my God. But he had the whole biker thing down. He was kind of scary. Lots of tattoos. Lots of... <laughs> piercings a lot of leather big <laughs> boots and it was like he's kind of the scary you know scary biker guy like could like kill you with his thumb or something you know of, he, yes of course so and you told the, and most most bikers look amazing and really nice <laughs> but this one was a little scary a little scary and what did he say when you told him he was so nice oh great he didn't well he didn't say, like, I'm so sorry. He just went, oh, you know, like, like he listened. Yeah. And then I saw him the next day and I went, oh, I want to thank you so much. We didn't hear you at all last night. Uh... And he says, I'm going to be doing some stuff today, though. <laughs> and I said, I don't I don't care during the day, <laughs> but I really appreciate it. And and he was really nice. Oh, so there you go. 
It was good. It was I good. love how you thanked him for not working on his flooring at 2 a.m. Like, thank you so much for not doing that. Oh, believe me. <laughs> believe me. I went off on the kill traveler's lady kindness. today. The, so I, I I did not kill the the traveler's lady with the progressive lady with kindness today. That was the other thing that Wendy, threw me into it. Wendy, you a... need to not be mean to poor customer service people. <laughs> you should have heard what she did. <laughs> What'd she do? Ronnie, you're not going to believe this. The people that are renting our house, we had to, she made us put them on our auto pod policy and exclude them because their address is the same as our address. What? And then she charged us $139 to exclude them. What the heck? So I found out after I made calls afterwards, like they told us it was Colorado law, the, the customer service lady. Oh. So at the end, when she told us, only at the end did she tell us, and you owe us $139. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and so I lost it. I said, are you freaking kidding me? Oh. And I was screaming. Oh, my goodness. And, and I said, I, I need to take a breath and not talk to you anymore. Do not do anything to change the policy. I will call you back. But I cannot talk to you anymore. Oh, you know, my. And I just was... You're going to get caught on video and they're going to post you as one of those Karen videos. <laughs> oh, you know, five minutes later, we had a request, a uh, request an email saying we owed the $136. She'd already done it. Oh my goodness. So, so I went to the beach and said, I was going to stay at the beach with Zoe until my attitude improved. Oh. And that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> well, Ronnie, it was 10 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't start drinking. I had to do something else. Well, I needed other, other coping me mechanisms. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. Well, I'm drinking a beer right now, though. You are? You didn't tell oh, me. Yeah. I would have had a drink. I, I know. Why okay. aren't you having a drink? We get... <laughs> well, that's nice. Yes. <laughs> oh. All right. Well. So you've got to say about your new job. How is it? Oh, yeah. I got a new job. So um, I didn't have the heart to tell you because you were so sweet remembering my start date and texting me on my start date, but that was not my start date. <laughs> oh. It got pushed back a week, but I was like, oh, I'm just going to leave it because Wendy was so nice <laughs> remembering, so I just left it. So my first day was actually Monday. Oh, um, wow. And it's been going good. I really like my boss. Um, she's like seems really involved, really like on top of it. It's very like different from the situation I was just coming from because my last team, really? well, my last team, we got moved under this really awesome, like younger manager who was like really on it, but she was having to, she didn't form the team. She was having to figure out what the hell the team did. So she was very hands off because she's just trying to figure out what's going on versus totally. this manager. I feel like has built the team herself. So she knows, oh, she knows what's that's going good. on. That's good. Yeah. That's perfect. And her perfect. boss is a woman, and that woman's boss is a woman. It's the score. It's the longest chain of women that I've ever seen. Like looking. Up. Wow, that's <laughs> cool. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, it's just going good. There's definitely going to be a lot of work to do, and it's definitely going to be like a step up as far as like the type of work I'm going to be doing. So I think it's going to be great. Hard, but I think it's going to be good. And yeah, everybody's That's really good. nice and the environment seems good so far. So yeah, it's just weird being like fully remote. Oh yeah. It's just a totally different mentality for me, which sounds so silly because I've been spending the last two years working from home, but it just yeah. always felt like temporary. But now it's like, I could potentially be working from home for like the rest of my life. Wow. Maybe, right? Every It's very plausible that every job I have from here on out is an app. You're so right. So You're so right. That's just like a mental Well, and, and I got to tell you. And it's always funny with new jobs, like these little differences in culture yes. that you don't notice. Like I, I popped into a meeting today that was everybody else was supposed to join at 1245. And then the two head honchos had their like one-on-one -on -one for the first 15 minutes. But I didn't know that because I didn't like read the description but i guess they do that in the description say like these people join at this time so i just popped in there and they were like 
hi, Ronnie. Um, we're actually not meeting till 1245. And I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so sorry. And they're like, don't apologize. I was like, well, that's a first impression. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because <laughs> the two of them were just talking. And all of a sudden, I was like, hi. <laughs> and, and they were prepping. That's such a cool yeah. thing, though. Yeah, it was cool. And then other thing is like on everybody has their cameras on a lot more at this oh, yeah. company than my old company, which I think is a really good thing. But yes. people, everybody has like either a fake background or a blurred background. Yeah. But I didn't really like notice that. But then today I realized, oh, my God, I'm like the only person that's just showing what their actual They're... office looks like. <laughs> but that's who you are. Yeah. You're so you're just authentic. I mean, you. <laughs> You get what you see, baby. I hope so. I just, I'm always like afraid when I start a new job. I think a lot of people feel this way. You want to like, you don't want want to ever be annoying because you want to be the type of person that like takes it all in and understands what's going on before you make any suggestions. Totally. But also you don't want to just be quiet. You want to, if you're like. Wondering why something is done a certain way, but you don't know what's sensitive, yeah. what's not sensitive. It's very like a walking on eggshells t- period, I feel like. Totally. I totally agree. Because if you go but, in there all guns a blazing when you got a personality like mine, that could that could rock some worlds, Wendy. Well, and you know, you could shake things up, but I think it's a lot uh, to ease people into people like us is a good <laughs> strategy. It's a good strategy. <laughs> Ease people into people like us. Yeah. I have to just make a note really quick. I'm in a, I want to do a highlight reel of all your quotes. So far, oh, I had, had to go to the beach until I had an attitude adjustment. <laughs> I can't I can't start drinking yet. It's 10 a.m. And it's a good approach to have to ease people into people like us. <laughs> You could say I'm on fire. You I'm are. I'm on fire. You're on fire. So, well, it's been a little while since we um, since we recorded, so this is pretty cool. This is great. Okay, so speaking of it. working from home, should we get into our big girl yes. skill of the day? Okay. I love it. Let me close my door because Parker just got home. Uh-oh. I'm recording, FYI. Okay, so speaking of working from home, this episode is inspired by, once again, therapy. (laughs) As most major decisions in our life should be, in my opinion. Yes, And so me and my therapist, uh, when we were working together, one of our sessions, I was talking about wanting to start newer, healthier habits in this new job. As far as, you know, working from home goes and just work habits in general. And she said, well, have you ever heard of good work from home hygiene? And I was like, do you mean like making sure I still shower? And she was like, (laughs) no, I mean like practices you can do when you're working from home for your mental health. And so we talked through some of those things. And these are like all habits that I don't do 100% of the time, but I'm trying to adopt as yes. I work from home. And so I thought, what a great topic for the masses. Oh, oh, especially since we're still in such an extreme state of most people working from home. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, right? and well, so I love it. And I didn't realize how much people loved working from home until yes. at Comcast, they had their return to office policy and there was basically an uproar. <laughs> yes. And that's yes, when we I was talked like, about it. Man, people like are. People really prefer it. Well, and obviously it's skewed. It's like I work mostly with engineers, but engineers yeah. prefer oh. to be at home. Oh, yeah. It seems like oh, yeah. big time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree. Okay. So I'd like to start this uh, conversation with a question for you, Wendy. Okay. If my math is correct, you started your career, <laughs> your tech career, like 1990, maybe a little, hmm. a little earlier than okay. that. Maybe. Okay. Okay. I'm right. just going off of your bio, which is always like, over 30 years of experience. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been saying that the whole time I've known you. So I just did 30. That's that's funny. <laughs> and went with that. So when was it? And also, what was it like living in a world where you literally could not work from home? 
because right. you didn't have a laptop, didn't have a cell phone. I can't even imagine like yeah. not being able to work from home. So what, yes. what was your favorite part of that? Least favorite part. Okay. So it was 1985 math girl. <laughs> That's my new name for you. And <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> and my favorite part was definitely being able to actually talk to people, mm. right? You had to talk to everybody. You didn't do Slack. We didn't have cell phones. Hell, we hardly had email. Yeah. We hardly had email. So that's crazy. Um, it's and uh, it's crazy to think about how you had to do a lot of standing up and talking to people. It just wasn't. So how did you know this is going to sound so millennial, but I just have to ask it. Oh, God. How did you know, like when you had meetings, if you didn't have an online calendar? <laughs> you had a Franklin planner that was a paper calendar <laughs> and so if someone wanted to have a meeting they'd have to like literally go up to every single person and invite them to and the meeting yes you could email you could email it out but you had everybody you had, had to put it on their calendar so how'd you even know when people were available you had to ask people an email and talk it all through. And we, you did a lot of, everybody was around each, each other. Oh, okay. So you didn't, you know, it wasn't as bad as, you know, having to go all over a building. Right, So right. groups, groups were kind of on each side of a hall, okay. right? So it wasn't as bad, but that is pretty funny. And I had totally forgotten about my Franklin planner. In fact, <laughs> I really remember... People having to like pry it out of my dead, cold hands. Like, <laughs> I don't want to go to the software version. I need to see it all. I, you know, it was, it wasn't real great at the beginning and when now, you got it online. That's insane now, because I don't, now you I don't are, know what I do without it. Yeah, your online I'm calendar nuts. is your life. Oh, and Chris, the first time, like, he set up dates, he would send me an invite. <laughs> And Parker that's just sent me an, a Google invite for a date today. There we go. See, <laughs> it was like, wow, you know, so that's crazy. Right now, the, you know, the least favorite part was to get anything done. You had to be at work. So, you know, having kids and working long hours, I was at the beginning oh. of my career. I was in system test. You know, you had long lab sessions you had off hour lab sessions. Um, so I remember these moments where I was doing the Mario Andretti race to get to the daycare before 6 p.m. when every minute you were late was $5. It was ridiculous. Every and minute you, you were late was $5? Yes. And so, you, you know, it I was don't appreciate one that. of it what was kind of customer so service stressful. is that? It was so stressful. And, you know, it was just what that time where you were trying to build your career and having young kids, it was really kind of a tough period yeah. that I look back on and think, how did we do it? Mm -hmm. But doing it where you had to be in the office every single minute was tough. Yeah. I remember at one period I went in of my career, I went in from 6 a.m. and got off at 2 and just because we had a hard time with sitters, if you lost a a sitter or a, um, a lot of times we were in at-home family care, it was worse than like a death in the family. <laughs> you you were like, I have to start all over again and find a new freaking sitter. <laughs> and it was awful. Oh it was just God. so tough. So it was really kind of a crazy period to think back to not having cell phones or when we first had to have cell phones and we're in a big bag and it was sit in the middle of your car seat, the front car seat. And it was really huge. The cell phone was. Oh my God. And it's crazy to think about <laughs> those times, right? That is crazy. Well, did you like, but, at least not like when you're at home, you couldn't work. Oh, so you were just that at was, home. When you left, you, you couldn't left. work. Usually yeah. you left. Right. So it felt like it was such a delineation yeah. between being at work delineation. and being wow. at home. That's a big, that's a big word for an engineer. 
<laughs> well, I try to impress you every once in a while. I am your mentor. Yes. So there. So, but it was so great because it was like church and state. You know, you you were just when you were there, you were really present. And you, and you did fun things. We did so many fun things when I first started working, like softball teams and, you know, group happy hours. And oh, when you yeah. left, you really left. Right, right. Right. Yeah. And I feel like a so, lot of those fun activities, they can happen in remote environments, but they take more effort. They don't happen yes. like as naturally. Well, and what kills me is we didn't really have a home office at all, even for our home finances or a home oh you know yeah nail your home when you get a home and you look at a new house it always you look has an at, office you have to have at least two offices now yeah right yep, yep. and so before we didn't even think about this mm-hmm. it was crazy yeah so well, that was my favorite part of being a server before i started my tech career before i even met you wendy when i was oh. slinging pizzas that was like my absolute favorite part is that when you went home there was just anything you were stressed about, like during at work, you just you had to let go because there's nothing you could do about it. You were at oh, home, like so it's true. over, and that's so just that like being able to say the sentence, "Well, there's nothing I can do about it now," is like the best technique to ever let something go about like anything. But when you say there's nothing I can do about it now, but technically there is probably something you could do about it because your laptop is at home. That's totally different. No, I totally get it. And I used to fantasize about having a job as a checker. I just wish I had a simple a job. Checker. Where you, you know, a grocery checker. Oh. Where you just, <laughs> you take the products and you scrape them by the, with their little code. And then you put them in the grocery bag. And at the end of the shift, you know, you're just smiling at people because they're, they're, you know, they're happy getting groceries. They're going home. They're fixing dinners that they like. And you could just be done with your shift and walk away and not have anything else to do. <laughs> you just start fresh the next day because you would bring all of this stress home with you because you couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. Even yeah. if you brought it home with you, it was all mental right, baggage. Right. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, totally. Ugh. Well, right. Well, <laughs> That ugh feeling is exactly why yes. we want to do this topic because I think there's some concrete things that you can do to improve your work, not work delineation, as Wendy put it, at home. Okay, here's, <laughs> I love it. here's another big word for you. Have you heard of coronasomnia? No, you made it up. No, I did not. Okay, I want to hear about well, it. Then. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Sorry, I just got so defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think you have it, Wendy. <gasps> really? Yes, I'm diagnosing you. What? I need to know what it is then. Yes. So I, <laughs> I learned about this while I was doing my research for this episode. And it's basically this idea that in our pre-COVID lives, our lives when we went to the office, we had all these time markers that helped us set our circadian rhythm. And the time markers Ooh. would be like commuting. Or eating lunch or commuting home or exercising yes. out after work. All these like routines that are built into traveling to the office. Yes. Now, post-COVID, if you find yourself working from home, you're probably doing a little bit of whatever, whenever you want to. Much less yes. structured, right? Yeah, and yeah. And that is not good for your sleep overall, causing insomnia, and they call it coronasomnia. And I'm saying you have wow. this because you will work on shit at fucking 3 a.m. Oh, yes. Yes. It is so true. So so what you're saying is that it's important to get back to some of the routines that you were forced to have when you went to the office. Yes. Is that exactly. It? Yes. Exactly. Okay. But since you work from home, you can do it in like a much more convenient way. I love that. And... I will say, um, we, I don't know if we talk about it specifically, I can't remember, but sleep is a big piece of this, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. This, uh, we, it's kind of, uh, the table stakes of this conversation is you have to do a good job of getting that sleep. Oh yeah. If you're ever going to do a good job of 
being able to delineate your work life and your home life. Right. When you're in the same home. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, and the so. sleep thing is just such a like vicious cycle because the less right. sleep you get, the less like productive you can be the next day, the more stressed totally. out you feel, the harder yes. it is to sleep that night. It's this, yes. Vicious cycle. Right. Yes. So let's get into the tips for creating a healthy work from home routine, Ronnie. Okay. And I want to preface this conversation by saying... That I do not do all of these things. I just have to say. <laughs> and as my therapist would say, it would be unrealistic to expect myself to be able to change all my habits overnight. Ooh, that sounds like real <laughs> mental growth to me. Thank you. That is fabulous. So I've like been picking one at a time and doing it a little bit better, but I've been I've been getting better. I'm getting some new new habits under. It's just, you know, it takes a while. So I just want to throw Ooh. that out there. I love it. I love it. So I'm trying to be hashtag so, authentic. And that that is something we can always depend on from you. Thank you, Rob. You're welcome, so, Wendy. So let's jump into tip number one, right? Yep. So we want to replace our commute with a different routine. And this could be like walking the dog. That's a big one for me. It it has been one of the best things about getting a dog. Or it could be sitting outside and journaling in the morning. Or it could be taking a shower where you're, okay, the morning's over. Now it's time to start, yep. right? For me, it could be putting on the fluffiest, coolest pair of slippers. They're your work <laughs> slippers, right? They could be, they got to be uber furry. Look forward to it, right? Yeah. You almost look forward to sinking your little toesies in those in slippers. The uber furry slippers. I love it. You like and them? the slippers. You like them. <laughs> Right, right. Um, what do you do in the morning, Wendy, besides walk? Is the, it mainly walk the dog? Because I can imagine you are quite energetic in the morning. And <laughs> if we were roommates, I would probably... It would drive you... I would probably have to kick you out of the house to burn some energy in the mornings before I let you back in. Is that what I'm and, guessing? And as a morning person, I can tell you, the it's been so funny because our routine has changed so much in the each of the different places we're at. So right now, we are biking to the gym here in North Padre Island. Oh, my God. And at 5.15 a.m. Oh, my God. That's because insane. Because they have the best classes, but they're available at 5.30 to 6.30 is the best ones. So Chris and I go. And I then even I always. I'm so asleep. I, uh, and then we bike home at 6.30 after he's worked out in the gym part and I've done the class. And then I take Zoe over to the beach and get to walk with Sean and get that bestie time where we get to connect, <laughs> right? And that is incredible. It's so fun to kind of talk through what's top of mind with you, right? Yeah. Then we come home. We have this great French press coffee. That's We finally oh, figured that my, out. This is blowing my mind. And because we realized we were kind of dealing with whatever coffee maker was at each place. Mm. And we wanted, we were, we had left the, the great espresso. Oh, I know. So we have an insulated. Thanks to you. French... I know Chris wanted to bring it. That's right. <laughs> so we have an insulated French press and we get good coffee. And then we always go out and sit outside because the weather's fabulous this time of year. And, and we have a coffee and we, kind of reconnect before we both go in he takes shower first i kind of get started and then i take my shower a little bit later and then it's like we don't really talk to each other until 5 30 when we reconnect oh my so, god that is crazy is that, is that crazy that is quite the routine the only person <laughs> whose routine i know that rivals that is jess poldy do you remember interviewing Jess Poldy? Yes, Strategy, I love her. Amazon, yes. Love her. Oh, and I think you sat next to her at my wedding. No? Yes, yes. I love her. Yes. She has a similar morning routine. Like, gets up. She's a big reader, so she gets up in the morning and she reads. Her and her husband wow. read. And then she walks her dog. And then she has her coffee. She's, like, just like that. Whoa. Th that's a morning person routine. That's yes. pretty intense. Yes. But I'm happy Now let's you. talk that sounds about wonderful. a... <laughs> Let's talk about a Ronnie routine. Okay, a Ronnie routine. <laughs> Ronnie is not a morning person. Ronnie had a nightmare this morning that she was trapped in a tornado evacuation center on a cot surrounded by people and her alarm was going off on her phone and everybody was mad at her and she could not turn the alarm off no matter what she did. 
Oh, that's, that's a weird dream. That's the most I think I've ever talked in the third person. <laughs> it's like too uh, yeah, much. Yeah, it is. That Ronnie. Yeah. But that's how much of a not morning person I am. That I will wow. literally incorporate my alarm into my dream for like half an hour. So that's what happened to me this morning. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to become more of a morning person. But my step one that I think is pretty manageable and most people could do is I get up in the morning and I go outside. I don't even go far. I just go into my backyard just to get the fresh air and the light. And I journal. But I don't really journal. What I really do is I write a list of three things I want to do that day. It's usually like one work thing, one big girl money thing, and then like or maybe two work things, whatever. And then I also do a list of three wins that I had the previous day. So it could be like something I got done or like spending quality time with my sister or just something that made me feel good. Kind of gets you into like a feel good headspace. Um, And then I go inside and I have my cup of coffee. (laughs) So So, mine takes probably 10 minutes. (laughs) Okay. Okay. But what kills me is... I think Chris sent me an article that you just just put out there in social media land um, where it was about how you get up a minute before, not you, but your generation gets up a minute before the nine o'clock time you have to be at work. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's bad. I used to just get up and like immediately turn my laptop on. And oh. that's bad. That's bad. So Uh, this is what we're talking about, though. This goes back to the overarching tip, which is you have to have some sort of quote unquote commute. You cannot just go into work. You need to do something to transition. Totally. And and likewise, you have to transition the end of your day as well. Right. Whether it's that another walk with the dog to get you. I think getting outside is so underrated oh my just God. even nothing taking makes me walk. feel better than or not even feel better just like i'm so much more productive when i right. have gone outside like it just right. is like it's the most impactful thing for me personally i i agree and it's so funny the number of times i've seen chris delineate the it's done because he'll have a beer and a koozie yeah and i'll go <laughs> oh work is over yeah and he'll <laughs> Oh, yeah. It's yes. Right. Or it could be taking off those furry slippers and putting on your tennis shoes to to go whatever you're going to do the rest of the night. Right. Or even different. uh, We have uh, Crocs, too, that we we wear. So it might be putting on a different pair of Crocs so that you physically feel like you are moving from work time to home time. Right. Changing from your work Crocs to your home crocs <laughs> yes exactly exactly <laughs> i really like that and another piece of uh or another tip i have here that i talk to about my therapist for the end of the day part of your end of day you know commute is tidying up your home office so literally yes. like physically closing your laptop piling up your little papers throwing away your drinks yeah. like this is what you would do if you were at the actual office like i totally. remember at the end of the day before i would go home my desk at work I would like clean it up and I would throw away things and it would, you just tidy it up before you left for the day because other people are going to walk by it. But we don't really think to do that with our home offices, but that can be a really great way to cue your brain. Like, okay, it's the end of the day. We're not working anymore. Well, and one of the things I like to do at the end is just, you know, there's those sticking things that you never got to those things that just stick in your brain. Oh, And so I'll jot them down, you know, like I have to do that letter to the insurance asking for an extension of ALE. It could be personal stuff that you needed to fit in and never got to, yep. or it could also be the professional stuff. And once you put it down on that piece of paper and leave it near your laptop on your desk, yeah, you can leave it there and not have to think about it the whole night. Right. right? That's that's so, so good. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Well, thank you. All right. Well, so let's jump into tip number two. So Ronnie, I know you personally have a hard time with this one. That is getting dressed. (laughs) You just walk real naked all the time. No, you do not do that. But honestly, how many days would you say you actually dress out of, get dressed from your pajamas? I would say probably maybe like two to three days, which is better than what it used to be. But 
good. Not, not a lot. Do you ever go a full day in your pajamas, Wendy? I can't even picture you in pajamas. Okay, smarty pants. (laughs) I just recently got the cutest pair of lime green silk short jammies from the the Sam's Club here. They have lemons all over them. Wow. They are so cute. Chris (laughs) even calls me lemon now. It's very cute. It's very, very, they are my happy PJs, but I always get dressed. I can't remember ever really keeping my PJs on all day, except I remember, uh, you know, like with the mastectomy or like when you're sick, you would kind of just hang out in your, like it was, I'm too sick to get out of Baba Java's. Yeah. You know, it was that kind of uh, attitude, mm-hmm. right? And, but I always make sure that my clothes are comfortable because let's be honest, life is too short to wear bras that hurt or clothes that are uncomfortable. Oh, amen, sister. Life, right? Life's too short to wear a bra in general, if you ask me. <laughs> so when we, I remember when we were packing the car, you know, you can only bring so many things. And I remember it was actually kind of easy because I'd go through my closet and I'd go, eh, eh, eh. Oh, I love that. Right. Eh. Oh, I like that. And I just pulled all the things out that I love. Yep. Yep. So it's going to be funny getting home because I'll probably get rid of a lot of the stuff that it was just eh. So if you def, when you get dressed, if you get dressed in something, it, I think it changes your whole attitude if you like it. Oh. That thing that you get dressed in. Right. Right? I like that. Also, I think- It just it, sets you up. It does. It sets you up. And I think another little sub tip here is that that makes it easier for me is it's like, okay, I don't have to get dressed dressed. Dressed. I don't feel yes. dressed like I'm leaving the house, but I should put something different on than what I slept in. <laughs> Like, that is a low bar. Low bar. Like low I, bar. you can even change into like another pair, a different pair of sweatpants <laughs> and a t-shirt. But at least like you changed, right? You, yes, you got to have exactly. something new on. It's just that the delineation as we talked about. No, I love that. Um, another big one, another tip that we talked about in uh, therapy is to practice intentionally detaching from work when it's not working hours. And this is one that Ooh. I've got on lock. Like the other ones, I'm like work in progress. This one, no. I don't fuck with this. I'm good at this, okay? <laughs> I love oh, it. I'm just going to lay it out there. So this first step here is to define your work hours. That's kind of obvious, oh. right? Like I'm going to work Big. 9 to 5, 8 to 4, 7 to 3, whatever it is. But even beyond that, one thing that I have learned in my career that I was definitely naive to when I started is how important it is to set expectations oh. with your boss and your coworkers. Because if so you don't, true. you will get walked all over and you will never be able to, it's gonna be very hard to set boundaries if you yes. set a specific expectation at the beginning. And this yes. is really important around working hours and also your response time. As in how quickly you respond to slacks, emails, pings, etc. Just the other day at the office, my for my old job, um, I was talking to an SVP and I like made a comment about her Apple Watch or whatever, and she's like, "Oh yeah, I can't live without it because I get all my work emails and slacks on my watch, so I like I can respond right away." And I'm like, "So you're telling me that it's 8 p.m. You have a glass of wine and you're trying to watch The Bachelor and you're getting work emails on your watch? That is not healthy, sister." (laughs) Know that you're looking at. Yes. It was, I Ugh. I was like, you're insane. Could not be me. But the, oh. the way I think about it is like, wouldn't you rather have the reputation as somebody who always has a helpful and well thought out response versus somebody who responds quickly? Oh, so smart. Right? So smart. I so agree. And I worst, I had learned that early on because I thought my ability to be on was how I was judged at work. Right. Right. And, um, I, you know, I would wish I'd learned of this phrase, like something like, as you know, boss, Judy, that was (laughs) Judy is my boss in this scenario. In this analogy, Mm -hmm. I get more accomplished and better work product when I do less multitasking. My motto is important over urgent. (laughs) I've, And the background with this, guys, is actually I didn't make that up. I wish I had. 
But the former president, Dwight Eisenhower, actually was often heard saying this. And he said, I have two kinds of problems, the urgent and the important. The urgent are not important and the important are never urgent. But the urgent's in your face all the time, right? So I have this euphoric um, feeling every time I get an important thing done, like, oh, this is going to make a difference. Yeah. Or this is something that's really going to, has a potential to, to make an impact. Yep. Whereas when I do something urgent, it's usually, well, Sally's off my butt now. Right. Or it's just, it's so weird how you wish you had the in the moment wisdom to really differentiate between those two yeah. things. Oh yeah, totally. So, yep. And I think that if you set the expectation that, you know, if somebody pings you at 7 p.m. that you're going to respond to it in the morning. Like you have that type of relationship with that person. They're not afraid exactly. to ping you after work hours because they understand that you're not online. You're not going to see it. They just want to get it off their chest and you'll get to it in the morning, right? Like these are exactly healthy boundaries. Ex- exactly. And put a little note to deal with it in the morning so that it can get off your mind and, and isn't, you're not having to sit there and or remember Or don't even it. have it be able to get to you. Oh, that's even better. Which a lot of people have a hard time with, but like the num the recommendation here yes. is do not have email or Slack or anything on your personal devices, which I know sounds crazy to people, but I have never had any of those things on any of my devices and I have no problem not thinking about work when I'm not working. It's like oh. huge to have that sort well, of cutoff. Well, and how can you worry about something if you don't know it's it came at you? Exactly. Right? <laughs> I mean, seriously, and I love that. If this is something that you feel like if you did this, that you wouldn't be able to keep up with your work, then I would implore you to Ooh. reevaluate your work environment. Ooh, and your culture and the job and all of it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. Because you can set a tone here. You have more power than you think you do. Yep. Yep. Because you can't be the only one worrying about this stuff. Oh, hell I no. Think. No. So I can guarantee right. there's somebody that's your peer in a different organization that doesn't look at their shit after five and doesn't look at it before eight. And they're doing just as well as you are. Like that's right. The person who's the workhorse and is just constantly going, going, going. That's not the person that gets promoted and works their way up. That's the person no. that ends up doing everybody else's shit. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. I'm feeling you're fired I up, love Wendy. It. I'm fired up. Yes, I can hear it. I love it. You go, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. The next one is one that I have come to appreciate immensely as I have lived life on the road, as we know, for this 14-month journey, which we only have eight months left. Isn't that weird? Wow. Oh, my God. I know. That seems like a lot. I know. In my head, I feel like it's almost over. Eight more months? Ugh. It's eight months, babe. Wow. It's eight months. But, But And that is your home working space. Yep. Right? So setting up this tidy and cute home office that is as separate from the rest of the house as possible is huge. You want to want to go into this place. Yep. Right? And this you've, whole you've messy... had to do this so many times this last oh, year. Yeah. You've... I've got it down. <laughs> and I can't believe how little you need to really have your crap together. Yeah. Yep. What are like some of your essentials that you have to have? Do you put it like a plant on your desk? Um, a good no, thermos. What's, what's your essential pack? I definitely need a, I, I've taken this everywhere. It's like a little, uh, do you have one? Oh, we have the same one. We, we got them from our trove boxes. <laughs> I know. And I love it. I love it. I know it's but, a little koozie or no, I love for that. people who are listening. It's a, um, not a koozie. It's a little pineapple a, coaster. Oh, and it's that's the so funny. Yep. Oh, it's so cute. But it's that kind of stuff where you you say, oh, coffee always makes it better. Like you have those coffee breaks during the day that get you up. And having that space where you know where it should go. Yeah. Having the, um, I never realized, but having sticky notes to mm. be able, and right there. Yep. Having all my cords organized. Oh. Man, that's huge for me. Yep. And then having a tablet. 
that I always have a, a running list of the urgent and important things that I know are kind of pressing on me. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I love, I'm sorry, I love scratching them out when I finish them. <laughs> it is so hey, satisfying. Hey, don't apologize, sister. I love it. I right? like to have little like memorabilia on my desk. Makes me feel good. Like I have these glasses that say Aww. Team Freaky J from my girlfriend Jess's <laughs> bachelorette party. <laughs> And I got a little cute little Polaroid of me and my one of my best friends, Aww. Casey. And I got Gun- Gunter, the Pez dispenser. Oh, my gosh. And all sorts of cute stuff. Just makes you feel good. Well, and I got to tell you, I kind of miss having that stuff. But it, it makes me... But you me... have this. You have one. Like, this is your stuff. Yeah. This brings you yeah. joy. This little coaster. Well, and I have a little... Do you know the little clips that you can hang stuff on oh yeah um that have the um what is it the where you pull the little strip and it comes off the wall without tearing off the paint yes command you know those things yeah command strips so i have those so i can hang all the stuff i need right on the wall beside my desk area wow and and now i know it you know i have my headphones in the bag hanging on that so every time we move, you know, I know exactly where everything is. It's been it it kind of makes it easy to to get set up and feel like you can have have a little workspace wherever you are. Yes. Even if it's two by two, you know. <laughs> Literally. So, yes, exactly. I like that. And also people do not work in your bed. It is tempting, oh. but it is very bad. As recommended by the European CBTI Academy. Your bed is for sleeping and hanky panky only. <laughs> I'm just saying. So no, no TV watching. You don't have a TV in your room. No, I watch TV in my bed. I really, I really shouldn't, but I definitely do. Yeah. So is there a third thing that should the um, European CBT Academy says you should do? <laughs> if if I were if for the Ronnie, the American Ronnie Academy says your bed is for sleeping, hanky panky. And watching TV. And watching da- Bachelor. And watching yes. Bachelor, yeah. But you're really not <laughs> supposed to watch TV in your bed, but I don't have a good yes. couch. You know what I mean? But yeah, exactly. When I have a good couch, exactly. maybe I'll break that habit. One yeah. thing at a time. I, and I'm telling you, a good cou- couch has made or not made each of the places we've been, these three different places, places one of them had a great couch. Oh, one. Oh man. Of the other two just were okay. Yeah. Right? And so that's the one thing when we get home, we've already said we're gonna get a hellaciously good couch <laughs> when we get home. I mean, great couch. Like, I love you, couch. I would ask you to marry me, but I'm already taken. So <laughs> all right. So the next tip is to take breaks. We think we need to just steamroll through our day, get as much done so we can get 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 out of there early that doesn't happen yeah right so i want you to think about how many breaks you would take naturally if you were in the office well because it's, it's stuff you would do normally you'd go talk to a friend you'd you'd go do a coffee run or you might go you know get some snacks or walk across the office to get to a meeting all these things so what is your favorite break activity ronnie Uh, Well, since I have some new wedding toys, I really like to make a latte or make a smoothie. And that's a good break. Um, I sometimes will fold laundry or I'll take the dogs on a walk. Anything that like doesn't take a lot of brain power and also I think keeps you off your phone is a good break. Yeah. Because I find that when I take a break to like look at my phone, look at Instagram or TikTok or whatever, it ends up like not really feeling like a break because I'm kind of going from like being focused to being like, super focused on my phone it's like you need to do something where you're not super focused right yeah a menial task menial one of those things you kind of do without even thinking about it right exactly what's what's your break activity pickleball oh pickleball oh oh oh, i wish it could be (laughs) if i could find a way to do pickleball for 15 minutes wendy's right outside my house dream house has a pickleball court in the backyard oh hell yeah yeah this is my new dream yes yes so I definitely have to set a timer to do the breaks. 
because I tend to kind of get immersed and, and, you know, just. That's crazy. I have to set a timer to do the work. The, oh, the breaks are easy. <laughs> you're so funny. And I just realized, you know, I, the, like, I get so immersed in an activity. I realize it's been a whole hour before I have even gotten out of the chair. Right. Yeah. So getting and targeting time to get up or a lot of times if it's a call that I have to make, I'll get up and walk around oh. to get just a different place. Yeah, that's good. That's um, good. But I do love now getting out on the deck and getting some sun. Oh, yeah. Or one of my favorite things is is to have dinner, um, you know, like do a little something to get dinner started. Oh, like that's cut up a vegetables. good one. Like do a little prep right? and then go back to work. Yeah, I'm going like to steal deep. that. That is good. Ooh. Cause then you feel like you got a head start on it. Yeah. And when five thirty comes, if you've like even cooked the chicken for dinner and now it's in a it it's in a bowl all ready to go in with the rest of the vegetables after they get cooked. Yeah. Golly, it just it feels like, man, I'm on top of this. Yeah. I am on fire. Yep. So Okay, you wanna know what kinda... I do? I got a hot tip for you. Yes, I, I wanna hear it. Fold my laundry during meetings. Not like that a meet, so good. not a meeting where I'd have to take notes or like I'm presenting to or totally. anything, but like an yeah. all hands meeting or whatever. I'll fold laundry oh. while I'm doing it, and I actually pay attention better when I'm doing that because I can't, really well I can't pick up my phone, I can't like look at something else on my computer, right? Because normally I would get distracted either like working during the meeting or looking at my phone during yeah. the meeting, but if I'm doing some sort of physical activity like the dishes or laundry during the meeting, oh my god. It's two birds with one stone, baby. Oh, that is so good. It's like how you like to walk around during your calls. Very simple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because um, it's like a little path I do like to walk and it's like pacing and it with, you know, 800, 500 square feet, it, it, it takes no time to get all the way across everywhere. So <laughs> you, you end up walking in circles a lot. It's pretty funny. So, Okay. Our last tip today. Maybe our most important is to check in with yourself multiple times throughout the day, especially in the morning, and to be realistic about your goals. Yes. So as we know, I'm a big Andrew Huberman nerd, like mega fan. Parker teases me about it. But yes, one, you're a stalker. I'm a stalker. He's on the list of dream guests for Big Girl Money, by the way. Ooh. Add him to the list. Let's put it out there. Put it out there. Andrew Huberman will be a guest on my podcast, putting it out there. Okay. But one thing that I've learned from him is about our ability to come in and out of states of deep focus. And what was crazy to me that I learned from him is that we're really only like our brains are really only capable of one to two 90 minute bouts of serious, like in the flow, deep focus, doing work that's like hard, not like wow. focusing on something that doesn't take a lot of brain power, but something yeah. like coding on a really hard problem. And being like totally in the zone about it, you can really only do that for about two sessions of 90 minutes. That's three wow. hours. Wow. That's the, amazing. And the other thing I learned is that in the first like 10 minutes of that 90 minute bout, it's going to be really hard to like get into focus. You're not going to be able to just snap into focus. And then the last 10 minutes, you're going to kind of be drifting out of it. Hmm. And what was helpful for me with that is that if I like set my timer for, okay, I'm going to get like 90 minutes of focus work done. If I'm struggling for the first 10 minutes, like it's okay because I know if yeah. I just continue to push myself and not go for any distractions that I'll eventually like get in the zone. But the other helpful piece of this is that you really cannot expect yourself to do eight hours of hard work. Like you just don't have that in you unless you have some external pressure, like a big deadline or something that's causing you stress, then you're capable of that. But unless you have that, like, it's going to be really hard to do that. But I think working from home without having these, like, built-in breaks, we set these super high expectations for ourselves. Totally. Because we think, oh, we're at home. There's nobody to bother us. We're going to get so much done. Right. So realistically, you'll spend three hours, but that doesn't mean you're not working the other five. No, no. All you bosses out there that are going, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm only getting... <laughs> but it does just means that the other five aren't as focused and the level of activities you're doing don't require the same level of concentration right. or intensity. Yeah, right? exactly. Like you're not going to so, spend eight hours working on your hardest problem. 
Yeah. So you'll be working on documentation or emails or, or even notes and yeah. getting those out, right? Yeah. The easier aspects of your job that are just important to do, but they don't require the same level of intensity. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Okay, well, yeah. those are all of our tips for working from home and hopefully improving <laughs> your mental health. I mean, Wendy and I are both on a big mental health kick. I think way yes. more than we were when we started this podcast. Totally. I don't think we would totally. have ever even thought to talk about mental health when we started. No. But no. just the pandemic and you going through breast cancer and everything has just made us realize that like we have to prioritize our health in every way. And it all starts, in my opinion, with your mental health. So. Well, and I've been so impressed with how authentic and open you are about talking about your uh, therapy and mental health journey and your struggle with anxiety. And it's been something I don't usually see of women your age. Oh. So I'm very impressed. Oh, thank you, Wendy. Okay, You're do welcome. you have any other tips for good work from home hygiene? Wash your pits. <laughs> <laughs> And that's our show <laughs> from New York City. Thanks. From New York City, it's Saturday night. <laughs> from Thanks Denver, for Colorado, listening. <laughs> and North Padre Island, Texas. Woo! Woo! Thanks See for you listening next time. to Big Girl Money.